should I accept that I'm this melancholic? Am I really this melancholic? Or should I do something about it? But then again, does it feel right to do something about it? How can I do something about it? And that is completely up to you. What kind of person do you want to be? Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Flow of Consciousness YouTube channel. Recently, I received a very beautiful comment by one of my dear subscribers where she asked if I would be willing to share my experiences and opinions on being considered more melancholic, being more heavy, being more focused on, you know, the sadness part of life, the more heavy feelings and how I deal with that character trait because I definitely identify or would consider myself as a more melancholic person. I'm not really this super light person all the time, right? I can be, I absolutely can be, and I want to be, right? I want to be lighthearted and joyful, and I try to really focus on that because I know it's inside me, I know it's within me, but my default state, let's put it like that, my default state is a more heavy melancholic side to my personality. And an upside to that melancholic side is that I feel that I have a lot of feeling for the world. I have a lot of attention for small details, beauty. I can be incredibly moved by the beauty in things. And I would consider sadness or any feeling, in fact, as something truly beautiful. If you can really allow it to be there, if you can really fully experience it, sadness is incredibly beautiful. Anger can also be really beautiful. Love, joy, confusion, excitement, all these emotions, I see the beauty in them and not always in the moment itself, but looking back or reflecting on these emotions, I can see that they are actually truly beautiful. It's a showcasing of your human nature and I think that has a very beautiful aspect to it. Now, it's definitely something that I have a love-hate relationship with, like this melancholic character, this melancholic vibe or attitude that I sometimes have. It's something that I can get very tired of and other times I can appreciate it, right? Because the melancholia allows you to be more introspective, to think more, to be more aware of your own inner world. And that can be a good thing, but too much of that is not a good thing, right? And so I find it very important to stay aware whenever I am slipping into this dark spiral, right? Because if you do that, then you will find yourself getting stuck there fairly quickly. And it's kind of hard to crawl back out. You have to put in a lot of effort to get out of the darkness again, to find the light. And that is definitely something that I need to be very aware of, that I don't let myself slide, right? Because it's easy to let yourself slide. It's easy to revert back to your default state, your default mode, and then all of a sudden realize that, damn, I'm back in the gutter and that's not where you want to be, right? So it's something that I have, you know, I fought a lot against this melancholic nature. I fought a lot for it. And I, I am slowly starting to integrate it more and more, right? Because what do you do, right? Do you accept that you're melancholic or do you want to change it? Because, you know, personalities, they are fluid and I don't think they're completely fixed. Of course, there are certain things that you have and other things that you don't really have. So, for example, I would not consider myself super funny or anything. And I have a great friend who is really funny and who is always like cracking jokes and puns and all these things. And this is part of his personality. This is not kind of like who I am, right? And it's definitely something that I've struggled with a lot because I wanted to be different. I didn't want to be so heavy or melancholic or, you know, so easily move. Like if I watch a movie, oh my God, I'm the first person to start crying simply because I feel the emotions in the movie. I see the beauty, the humanness, this is, I get so quickly moved by beautiful sceneries around me. Like I can remember when I was on a trip to France and I left the train side, there was a son who was waiting for his dad. And so his dad left the train and they, they met each other, they met one another and they, they embraced one another in such a strong, powerful, loving, caring embrace. And I started crying when I saw that, like this father 
son love this they they miss each other they have missed each other for such a long time i i don't even know what happened exactly right but i could see the raw love and 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 respect for one another and that really moved me right so this is i think a beautiful side of this melancholic character right you you are more attuned to the energies that are surrounding you and you're more drawn to I don't know, subtle beauty all around you. And, and that's that's something to be appreciated, something to be grateful for, I think. But on the other hand, right, you're not considered the joyful party person. And that is definitely something that I struggled with when I was younger, that I felt like people didn't really want to invite me to parties, for example, because I simply was not super joyful. And I understand that if you are organizing a party, you want people to be happy and loud and joyful and making jokes and, you know, being fun and lighthearted. But I was not really that. I was more heavy. I was more, you know, melancholic. And that has caused me to struggle a lot growing up. I had a lot of difficulties with this. But then I started to understand that there is a beauty to it as well. And I think that it's really important to find the balance for yourself. How far do you want to go into this melancholic direction? And how far do you want to maintain some kind of like playfulness, lightheartedness? And you have to decide for yourself whenever it's too much. Like I've definitely been through phases where I felt too melancholic, like it was too much. And I had to make a change and you can, you totally can make a change. You can decide to no longer focus your attention on the sadness all the time because that is going to burn you out. You will feel drained after a while simply because all your energy and attention and focus goes to this sad, heavy feeling and that's not what you want. So by asking yourself different questions, by putting your attention onto something else, right? Rather than focusing on why am I so sad or why am I so melancholic? You can focus your attention on how can I make my life a little bit more playful and go do things that that feed into that, that allow you to feel more playful. I love to spend some time with, you know, good friends or especially like girls. They make me a little bit more playful somehow. And I very much like that because it allows me to express this playful side to my personality, which I definitely have. But if I don't look for particular situations that bring out that part of my personality, I tend to, again, revert back to my default state and that is not good if that is for an extended period of time. So you can work both ways. You can find situations that you know will pull you out of your default state and you can elevate your default state by actually consciously choosing to put your attention onto other things, by choosing to put your attention on trades that you would like to have a little bit more of. And don't try to beat yourself up for being melancholic because, you know, it's difficult it's a difficult issue because how much do you want to accept that you're melancholic and how much do you want to change it? And for me, it has been a constant battle, right? When I was younger, I went through a phase where I completely rejected it and I tried to be something totally different. And that left me feeling confused and empty and very unhappy. And then I tried to completely embody it and fully be the melancholic person. And that's also not working, right? So personally, for myself, finding the balance, but I had to go in both directions in order for me to know what it's like to be extremely like not authentic and then to be too much into the, this is who I am and it will not change kind of, you know, thought pattern because both are not good. You want to accept that yes, there is more melancholic sides to your personality, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that you have to be this heavy, sad person all the time. That's really not necessary, really not. And that's definitely something that I've learned. So to give you a more practical kind of like way of dealing with this, figure out where are your edges, figure out what's important to you, find people that you look up to, find people that bring out different sides of your personality and allow them to do that and then see what actually brought this out of you. What are the things that they did or that you were thinking that made you act not as melancholic as you would if you were by yourself, for example, right? So be aware that by spending too much time alone, you will probably revert back to your default state. So 
consciously choose to put yourself in situations that elevate your default state, that make you behave in ways that are still true to you, but that are not too close to your default state where you usually you revert back to if you're more by yourself because as a melancholic person you are also very sensitive and people can really really hurt you and that is something that can feel very scary so i have to be aware that i don't isolate myself too much and that i allow myself to be open to be vulnerable to receive other people and to accept that sometimes you might get hurt and that's totally fine you will be able to deal with it you don't have to trust that other people are completely trustworthy the only person you really need to trust is yourself and know that you will be able to deal with any situation that life throws at you even if you are more inclined towards melancholia. So I hope that this was at least somewhat relatable because I know what it's like, right? To, to question yourself, to struggle with these questions that should I accept that I'm this melancholic? Am I really this melancholic? Or should I do something about it? But then again, does it feel right to do something about it? How can I do something about it? And that is completely up to you. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of character traits do you want to embody and are they part of your makeup because i believe that we have a certain multiple set of qualities right i am not a professional basketball player or i am not whatever like an incredible painter or drawer I, I i simply don't have that in me right but i can write really well i can speak quite well i can emote really well these are things that i discovered about myself that i'm good at and that i like to do also and usually these are correlated right the things we like to do are also the things we're good at because simply because we do them more often and we have more practice and more experience now these are things that are unique to you and that are your strengths so work with those and fix the small things that are easy to fix but don't lose yourself in trying to for example, for me to become a professional basketball player. It's not something that I would really want to do, right? So that's the first thing. Do you actually really want to do it? Ask yourself, what is your motivation to do anything? Is it because of external drivers like your parents telling you you need to do something or your friends thinking it's cool to become a basketball player or whatever, right? Ask yourself, what is your motivation? And find this inner resourcefulness, this inner drive to do something that you want to do. And then fix small weaknesses that are easy to fix that don't take too much of your time and energy because it's way better to put your focus on to your strengths and to really thrive in that area so it's a beautiful thing melancholia sadness it's beautiful and it took me a long time to see that and to accept that and to know that people also value this, right? You have to surround yourself with the right people that actually appreciate someone who can see the beauty in things, who actually appreciate someone who is a little bit more quiet maybe or more thoughtful, right? Usually people who are melancholic, they're also way more thoughtful, way more sensitive. So they think a lot about before they say something because they know that words can have a drastic impact on somebody's mood or somebody's feelings they can really affect people your words can absolutely affect people and as a melancholic person more sensitive person you know this because you have been affected by people's words so you're really careful with yours and that is a good quality that is that is valuable because you can really care for people that way you can really make them feel seen and heard and not judged or attacked right so this is a great quality it's a beautiful thing so find people who appreciate that that's something that i struggled with a lot growing up that i was surrounding myself with people who cared way more about you know party and status and image and you know some kind of culture where melancholia was not really appreciated it was more like ah, why do you always have to be this like i don't know thoughtful or sad or, or you know, heavy or, or thinking about stuff so much. Just be a little bit more lighthearted and playful. And yes, while that is indeed something that I need to do because I want to do it, it is also something that caused me a lot of suffering because I felt like it was not my place. Am I, am I wrong for being so melancholic now? Or am I a bad person because of that? I, I had all these questions. And then I came to realize, no, it's not that. It's just that these people don't value this 
character trait and there is other people who actually do and I very much appreciate someone who is thoughtful who is a little bit more melancholy because I can have great conversations with these people they think about stuff right they 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 are more aware of life in general right they, they have probably been through a lot of things and this caused them to be a little bit more mature I, I would consider melancholic people usually more mature a little bit more mature and that can flip into the other side where they become like too boring too stale too mature and you want to maintain a little bit of this playful childlike energy and it is absolutely something that I admire in people and that I want to see more of within myself and that's also something that I try to cultivate on a regular basis by hanging out with these people and by focusing on ways to actually express this within my own personality because it is there and I'm sure that it is there with you too. So stay aware of where you're at and stay aware of your default state. Try to elevate your default state a little bit and find situations that bring out other parts of your personality that you want to cultivate a little bit more of. So I hope that was relatable. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. I am always excited to start a conversation and to learn more about you because I think it's really, really important for me to understand what you're going through and hopefully provide you with my experiences and perspectives that can be of service to you. I want to be of service to you. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.